Hey there, 2018. Good to see ya. I'm happy you're here because the last guy who had your job didn't do so well in a lot of aspects. Now look, I realize you've got a lot to do in the short time you have, but could you do me like one small favor? Maybe clean up the game industry just a little bit? Between terrible fake games, Steam Direct, loot boxes, DMCA takedowns, threats, and everything else, it gets a bit tiring trying to keep on top of it all. If you could start things off on a good note, that'd be great. Uh, oh. I guess we're doing this all over again. Hey guys, Patty here. 2017 was kind of crazy for my channel, lots of ups, a couple downs, but overall it was the most growth I've ever seen and I really feel like I found my niche in regards to the content that I make. That content though just happens to be torturing myself by playing the worst games imaginable. So we've come to the start of 2018 and I'm looking back on everything I've played and deciding what the worst of the worst is over the last year. Now before we get started, there are a couple rules that I'm going to make very clear. The games I choose are the ones that I personally play played and covered on my channel in some form. If I didn't play it, it's not going to be on the list. There is a limit to one game per developer because I want to cover as many bases as possible. Also, games that are complete asset flips are going to be excluded from the list as I feel it would be an insult to the person who originally made them. This only applies to games that were taken in their entirety though and re-uploaded. So basically, if you have regular assets in your game that you found from random places, you're still pretty screwed. The list is based on the titles that I hated the most throughout the year. There are a few that might still be real video games but pissed me off uncontrollably regardless. Regardless. Basically, this is the worst stuff that left an impression on me throughout the year. So with that being said, let's get started. These are the worst games ever of 2017. <laughs> Late entry into this list, Go-Kart Survival makes it in by being a broken piece of trash and the latest in over a dozen games by Valkala Software. The MO of this developer seems to be using assets from the Unreal Engine and crafting crudely laid out maps with them, releasing it as a full release but still stating they're going to be updating most of their games. A problem starts to arise though when you have 16 games of all the same haphazard quality, there is no way you can update all those games properly or increase their quality. The few times Valkala Software has updated updated their games, it's simply to make one or two small fixes or add in more levels of the same horrifying quality. This is seen in action with Go-Kart Survival, with Valkala Software releasing a camera fix and changing the character model in the game while leaving the rest of it a broken mess. They will leave nice messages on your negative reviews though, but after a while it becomes very clear they're trying to douse a fire and avoid flack. <laughs> Any kids games are a giant tax write-off by their parent company Marked and Technic, I'm pretty sure at least. It's the only way to explain the plethora of trashy games they release that then target kids as the demographic. Any kids games are bad, and that's why kids are targeted in the first place. They believe that if a game's bad, kids won't care, or that it somehow discounts criticism of a product. I've been on a crusade this year to help people realize that kids games have a right to be good too. And it all started after playing My Boyfriend, the most vapid, shallow, useless, stereotypical game I've ever experienced. A game with dialogue that supports and encourages girls to trick men into doing what they want, to act like they're angry so their needs are met, etc. The entire game is bad morals aimed at kids wrapped in one terrible gameplay loop after another. It was hilarious to play, but any parent that willingly gives that to their kid really needs to get their head checked out. <laughs> This game was such a fuster cluck that all the DLC was cancelled. That should tell you everything you need to know. I like Mass Effect, don't get me wrong, but I'm not in like with it. I thought the series was at its peak during Mass Effect 2, combining story elements with well-designed levels for an all-around great experience. I appreciate games with design levels more these days because developers like Bioware have gone so far in the other direction. Ever since Dragon Age Inquisition, the Bioware model is to make a big open world with a million objects to interact with because that's what keeps players coming back for more. The problem is, I'm not coming back for more. Mass Effect Andromeda fulfills this ideology from EA and Bioware perfectly. The game relies on large open areas with respawning enemies and material nodes to soak up a huge amount of playtime. 
That's freaking boring. A good open world needs to have something interesting around every corner. A plant that you can scan every 200 feet is definitely not that. My personal last straw with this game was when I went back to a previous planet and saw that an entire new area was unlocked. I could see it from afar, this giant segment of map waiting to be explored with buildings everywhere, so I drove down to it, only to discover that all those buildings were the same thing copied and pasted all over a relatively flat plane. You couldn't even go inside any of them. Ignoring stuff like that, that, there were various bugs, glitches, baffling gameplay decisions like galactic travel taking forever due to animations repeating that made this an all-around unbearable experience. There wasn't a buggier game this year than Minotaur. Every conceivable aspect of this game was broken in some way or another. This is one of those times where the developer claims they're gonna fix it, but after playing it firsthand, nothing short of divine intervention could make this an acceptable experience. Animation glitches, sound bugs, stun locks, terrible voice acting, nonsensical asset placement, sluggish combat, floating characters, no collision detection. The list goes on. I'm convinced that it would take more effort to break some of these mechanics than to get them working properly. On the bright side though, it did give me this wonderful image of a Minotaur getting a rod stuck up his butt. I can't really tell if he likes it though. I almost feel sorry for Days of War, if I'm being entirely honest. Originally set to be a throwback of FPS games in the early 2000s, all of their thunder was stolen by the rapid success of Day of Infamy by New World Interactive, the ones behind the excellent Insurgency series of mods and now full games. Notice that I said almost, because in all honesty, Days of War screwed Days of War. Despite having an all-time peak of 783 players, which still isn't an insane amount, but it's okay for an early access FPS. This game dropped fast and hard, currently sitting at a daily peak of three players as of writing this. Nobody's playing this early access World War II shooter, which costs $27.99 Canadian and is utterly useless because it doesn't have offline functionality with bots. There are plans of course to add bots in 2018, but for most of 2017, anyone who had the game would never be able to play a 2v2 round. Adding on to this, a controversial decision earlier in the year to remove recoil had remaining players up in arms, as did the response by Driven Arts, basically saying, if you don't like their game, then don't play it. I mean, that's kind of what everyone was doing already. Despite recoil being removed, it was still present in the game's trailer for a time before being updated, giving potential buyers a false impression as to what the game was. The marketing for the game in general was also suspect. For most of the year, the Steam store page listed misleading box quotes from the likes of Joe Parlock and other journalists. The quotes in question were conveniently cut off to make it look like the articles cited are praising the game or stating that it's a successor to Day of Defeat in quality. In reality, these quotes were exclusively from articles that overviewed the game when it was on Kickstarter, reiterating the ideas the developers themselves put forward. So basically, they put in quotes from articles that people wrote who hadn't played the game but tried to make it look like they did and that they loved it. That's a pretty whack thing to do, yo.
I decided to list this game as the one to represent the stain on Steam's undergarments that was Ryu vs. Cloud. Before being kicked off Steam, Ryu vs. Cloud made some of the worst asset addled nonsense available on the platform, and Infiltration was their magnum opus. A game composed entirely of assets from docs.unrealengine.com, Infiltration saw you perform some basic tasks like opening doors, shooting enemies, picking up weapons, and loading cutscenes. The thing is, all of that content was taken directly from the website and hardly any of it was edited. You get popped into a test area and at multiple points simply watch a cutscene that's available for free on YouTube as the entire level. No, seriously, the entire final level, heavy air quotes of the game, is just this cutscene. The game itself is about 15 minutes long. Ryu vs. Cloud also didn't take well to people pointing out their various liberties with game development, banning me from the Steam forums for their games, and doing the same for anyone else who raised a stink about it. That is, until Valve kicked the floor out from under their feet and they disappeared into the clouds. The Ryu vs. Clouds. Space explorers shouldn't exist, and I have no idea how the developer Beachwave Studios is still on Steam. Clocking in at 7 minutes long, Space Explorers mimics a visual novel by having some words pop up on the screen. You'll be too busy to notice the words though, because you're staring at the most horrifying naked 3D models you could ever imagine. These are so bad that when I uploaded an uncensored mirror video to Pornhub, it got blocked in every country except the USA. This game is too shit for Pornhub. It was also too shit for Steam Greenlight, although Green Light itself was also pretty shit. Space Explorers and other games by this developer were deemed incompatible for the Green Light program due to breaking many oh so many rules. These included debuting the game completely uncensored with crudely drawn images of completely naked people in the trailer, screenshots, and logo, blatantly taking screenshots and assets from random places on the internet, and arguing with those who called them out on being awful. The only respite I got while playing Space Explorers is that sometimes you don't have to stare at the naked demons in front of you because some of the characters aren't even rendered in the game. No seriously, there's a character on the screenshots on the store page that doesn't exist at all in the game. I mean, it saves my eyes, but still, that's super for misleading advertising. You knew it was going to be on this list somewhere. Star Wars Battlefront 2 2017 sparked an international debate on whether or not a Star Wars video game was encouraging kids to develop gambling habits by tying progression systems entirely to loot boxes. This is a thing that is real and exists. Battlefront 2 2017 represents everything bad about video game publishers. It's the game that finally and publicly overstepped the boundaries of what even the most nonchalant of gamers will accept. Literal power advantages were locked behind random upgrades that you could increase your chances of getting if you shelled out real money. You weren't even paying for the items outright, just the opportunity to suck some undigested nuggets from EA Sphincter and hope there was a juicy one. Then they removed paid progression and exposed that the entire multiplayer was based around it being the core of the game, making it take at first about 40 hours to unlock heroes like Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader. You know, the most recognizable people in Star Wars. Add into that some extremely disappointing single player options. The campaign was barely 5 hours long and felt half baked with a weak twist coming very early on. The real ending of the campaign was also locked behind DLC, free as it may be, why not just ship it with the real free freaking game. The offline modes are still a joke as well, only some arcade challenges and a small skirmish mode on four different maps are available. Just add in all the multiplayer modes as offline modes, you know, like the entire point of the original games. I mean, for God's sake, Starfighter Assault isn't even available at all in single player, despite it being the one multiplayer mode that already has AI in it. And you know deep down that the reason these still aren't there is to push games as a service and with a certain lifespan. Battlefront 2 will die, and then you won't have access access to as much content, so you're forced to buy the next one. That is, if Papa Disney lets them make it. What do you think is the worst sin you can make when developing a video game? Stealing assets from other high profile games probably ranks pretty high up there. Mission Escape from Island is a scam as far as I'm concerned. A bare bones FPS roughly 20 minutes long and completely riddled with objects, music, and items from other sources used without permission. The most egregious of these being when a viewer on my channel pointed out after my original video 
that the tents used in the game were from Fallout New Vegas. After checking myself and comparing images, surprise surprise, they were completely correct. In addition, all the music was blatantly taken from other sources. Far Cry 1's menu music is present during the game, as well as songs by recording artist Clement Deitchev. I might have pronounced your name wrong, if I did, I apologize. There is even watermark logos from textures that they used to cover up mountains and other objects in the game, like how lazy can you get? How this game is still on Steam is beyond me. It contains content stolen from other sources, and despite myself and others reaching out to the likes of Bethesda, Obsidian, and Valve, nothing is being done. I remade this entire game in less than 15 minutes. Did you know that? You probably did, because that was my most viewed video of the year thanks to Reddit and Kotaku. But the reason Glitch Simulator 2018 makes it to the front of this list is more than that. It represents the overall laziness of asset flippers and serves as proof that Steam Direct is an utter failure of a system. Glitch Simulator 2018 is a vapid shell of an FPS. It's the product of somebody opening up Game Guru, loading up a flat map, making a box, and adding in stock assets from the client, then slapping a meme-filled name on it. And this is the type of game I hate the most, one that relies on a single joke that isn't all that funny in the first place and does absolutely nothing beyond that. These games and the developers behind them make crap while hiding behind a shield yelling satire whenever somebody calls out their game on being shit. I'm sick of that. I'm sick of idiots in the comments telling me I shouldn't take it seriously as a video game because it's memes. Why can't a meme game be good? Why can't a game have a joke and gameplay involved? I've played some games with both, so it's not impossible. Instead we get stuck with trash like this flooding the Steam market and taking taking attention away from developers who put a minute amount of effort into their games. I've talked to developers myself about this. It's incredibly difficult to get noticed on Steam nowadays, largely due to the fact that the storefront is flooding with crap every day. Mellow Online from Sentinels of the Store told me the other day that the release projection for Steam in 2018 is 11,000 games. That's fucking insane. How can you possibly quality control any of that? You can't, and it's going to drive away proper indie developers. It's already starting to now that companies like Nintendo are opening themselves up to more indie games. Glitch Simulator 2018 is the perfect example of where Steam is heading in 2018, and easily earns itself the title, ironic as it is, of worst game ever of 2017. Christ, that was a long time coming. Okay, so let's end this off by saying thanks to everyone for a fantastic 2017 and already an awesome start to 2018. I saw more growth this year than ever before, and you guys are all fantastic. This year, I aim even bigger. I've started streaming on Twitch, so be sure to follow me there if you haven't already. I've also still got my Discord server that could use a few more active members as well if you want to head over there. Links to all that stuff and more in the description. Also, if you see any probably terrible games, feel free to send a link over so I can take a look. And lastly, if you like my content and want to support it, Patreon and PayPal links are open always. You can also share my videos on places like Reddit or Twitter. Every little bit really does help. It only gets better from here. Or maybe worse. This is a pretty negative series after all. I just